Hello, today's movie is Inferno, the 1911 Italian silent movie. I've heard this film contains some amazing, very early special effects and some very disturbing and surreal imagery. I've seen a couple of little clips and I've heard that the visual style of the film is based on the art of Gustave Doré, who I love, so I'm really intrigued and excited to check out Inferno. Let's take a look. <laughs> So this movie is 110 years old. That's pretty amazing. They boobs? Can't tell if they're male or female. Okay. I thought this credit sequence looked very modern. There's a lot of nudity or near nudity in the clips they're showing so far. I can't include the music for copyright reasons. So Dante imagines himself in this situation. The hill of salvation which he endeavours to ascend. Okay. I've never read the Inferno. Is that a puppet? Is that a person in a costume? It's pretty good. Dante, the, uh, Beatrice, the ideal of Dante, descends from paradise into limbo and asks Virgil to rescue and guide Dante. Okay. Wow. How have they done that? That looks fantastic. Woo! Very cool. That was really well done. So Virgil is supposed to be helping Dante, but he's taking him to the Inferno. Wow, fantastic scenery. I think this film presupposes a level of familiarity with the Inferno, which I don't have. That's quite a set of man boobs. So it's pretty heavy on the religious themes, which I guess shouldn't surprise me. It's about hell. There's a lot of pointing acting in this movie so far. A lot of nudies. Oh, so if you were good before Jesus was born, you're still in purgatory. Is that, is that what they're saying? You can't be saved because you were born before Jesus was born. That's, that's a bit, that seems unfair. So there'll be no cavemen in heaven, I think is the point. Wow, here we go. That's pretty cool. So this is King Minos, and is he a giant? Are they doing some forced perspective thing there? Looks pretty amazing. Oh, ladies, ladies who are carnal sinners. <laughs> They're the worst kind. <laughs> They're punished in hell. Wow, look at that. That's very Terry Gilliam. It's like some kind of animation and they've got multiple sort of screens going at once how are they doing this in 1911 lovely what a lovely effect 
Oh. Filth. I like how they're inserting stories within the story in this movie. So for the sin of premarital sex, they're consigned to purgatory. That's an amazing effect, really. The circle of the gluttons. I guess so. Is it so? These are the so these are the seven circles of hell. Ooh! Wow! That's awesome. Wow, that is powerful. Look at the clouds and things in the background. How are they doing that? How are they doing it? See, there are elements of this that I'm not getting. Pluto is on guard over this misers and spendthrifts but he's why is he enraged at Dante another very cool forced perspective thing there misers and spendthrifts are condemned <laughs> to roll great bags of gold around their circle of the inferno All these misers and spendthrifts appear to be men. <laughs> these loincloths are very scanty. The imagery is pretty amazing. <clears throat> this film really does have a very dreamlike quality. The pace of it is a little bit slow but it does fit in with the dream-like atmosphere. But I think it could easily send you to sleep just because of the pace. So brilliantly well done. 1911 they were doing this. This is such an ambitious movie. The scope of it is pretty epic. All this smoke in the background of every scene looks amazing. It really adds so much atmosphere. It's a very harsh worldview. You pretty much punish for everything in this afterlife. Ooh, nice smoke. Ooh, how are they doing all of this? Probably just blowing up gasoline or something, I guess. Ooh. Wow. Really powerful images. This film is making me feel so sleepy. Not because it's boring, but because it's so dreamy. I think you would enjoy this a lot more if you were familiar with The Inferno. I wanted more of the monster. So suicides are changed into shrunken gnarled trees which can speak. Holy hell. Look at those bird people. It really does have the look of a Gustave Doré artwork. They've done a great job with that. Ooh! <laughs> so that was the tree 
spouting blood when you break off a branch. Oh, so there are harpies in the trees. There is something quite Monty Pythonish about a lot of this. I can't help but wonder if the Monty Python crew saw this movie. Wow, look at those demons. This is really a horror story about the afterlife. The horror story about what happens after you die if you are in any way a sinner of any kind wow look at that amazing looks like there are some ladies here no maybe it's really hard to tell I guess I'm just trying to work out if there's, you know, <laughs> topless women here or not. There are sins in this movie that I've never heard of before. Summonists who have sold the church's goods for gain are buried head downward. Ooh. That's a very Terry Gilliam image. What this is really like is a sort of animated version of Gustave Doré's illustrations of the inferno it has a look of animation wow that's powerful very creepy oh nice wow Oh, what's this? Ooh. Ooh. What are these? Wow. Are these solid costumes? Are they statues or it does really cap capture that feeling of a a dream slash nightmare. The fact that all these punishments in hell take place in your underwear makes it worse. Oh, 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 what happened then? He was transformed into a lizard person. That was unexpected. Sowers of discord and promoters of dissension are maimed by demons. So now that it'd be everyone on the internet. Oh, oh, is that guy got his entrails hanging out? <laughs> wow. Oof. Bloody hell. Ooh. Oof. This motif of naked bodies writhing in the ground is a strong one in this movie. Are these sets or actual locations? I can't even tell. This is really reminding me also of um, Barbarella, some of the scenes in that. Three giants, how are they going to portray them? <laughs> that was really well done. So hard to keep my eyes open right now. Oh, look at that. This is amazing. Really is genuinely amazing. 
I mean, this must have been, you know, the epic of its time. The Lord of the Rings of its day. So many variations on being buried in the ground, up to your neck, head first, in a lake of pitch, getting rained on with fire. The set design is amazing. It does have some real horror moments in it. I mean, I've watched a lot of horror, but I can't say I remember seeing a scene of someone chewing on someone else's skull before, while the person was alive. <laughs> Maybe in Hannibal or something like that. Can I stay awake for the next eight minutes? I'm really struggling. <laughs> That's grim. That's really grim. So a lot of these flashbacks are about torture and murder. Wow. Oh. <laughs> this film is absolutely worth watching just for the imagery, even if the story doesn't connect with you. These long shots, I think, are making me sleepy too. Look at all those wings! Oh! <laughs> that is brilliant! Fantastic. So sleepy now. So I'm still slightly unclear. All this trip through hell and everything they've seen. It's all Dante's imagination, a dream, a vision. Oh, that's nice. Wow. Well, Inferno was certainly spectacular and epic. It is filled with absolutely amazing visuals and really incredible pioneering special effects that will make you wonder how they did it. I, a lot of this stuff, I still can't work out how they did it. It's amazing to think that all of this could be done in 1911 with such limited technical resources as they had back then. While I really enjoyed it and admired it so much, I didn't feel very connected to the story and it may be because I'm not familiar with Inferno. I haven't read Dante. As someone who doesn't really have a religious background, it did come across to me as like a horror film about what people thought the afterlife might be like and it really does present a kind of bleak and pretty unforgiving spiritual worldview in which every sin, no matter how obscure, how small, is punished in brutal ways. This film really did make me incredibly sleepy and I did find it hard to stay awake, not because I was bored, but purely because it had such a hypnotic feel to it in both the look of the film, the style of the storytelling, and also that prog music soundtrack, which was quite hypnotic. I would highly recommend Inferno if you're looking to see a visually stunning and very imaginative film from 1911, which is hugely ambitious. If you are after a contemporary style of storytelling, you will not find it in this movie though. It is much more on the level of a dreamlike spectacle. And yes, it can be purely enjoyed in terms of its visuals without having to connect to the story too much. If you've enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would like and subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.